publishing for young adults is going through a horror revolution. There's more of it, it's better, and we're seeing more kinds of authors represented. I read horror year round, but I figure there's no better time than October to talk about 10 of my favorite horror novels by black authors. My name is Yona. I'm a librarian here at Field Teen Center, and we've got a lot of books to get through, so we're gonna go fast. One of my personal favorites is always White Smoke by Tiffany D. Jackson, because the first time I read it, it genuinely creeped me out. Madi has anxiety, but that's not the reason that she hears weird noises in the house at night when Theoretically, everybody should be asleep. And why her stepsister seems to be talking to somebody who isn't there. If you like the idea of a haunted house story mixed with social messaging about gentrification, this is the book for you. And if you've already read and enjoyed White Smoke, you should check out Tiffany D. Jackson's newer book, The Weight of Blood, which is a reimagining of Stephen King's novel Carrie. And like the novel by Stephen King, it focuses on a girl at prom and a horrible prank gone wrong. This is a story about social exclusion and revenge, but unlike Stephen King's version of the story, Tiffany D. Jackson focuses on the racial elements and gives us a picture of a girl who's being excluded in this all white town because it is discovered that she has black lineage. And if social horror and prom drama are your thing, you should also check out The Black Queens by Jamada Emil. This one is more of a mystery thriller, and it unravels the story of a town's first ever black homecoming queen and her subsequent murder. If you're looking for more of a campy romp, especially one that takes place at a summer camp, and especially if you are a girl who likes girls, you've got to check out You're Not Supposed to Die Tonight by Kaylin Barron. You might already know her from titles like This Poison Heart or Cinderella is Dead. You know she is great for writing sapphic romances with a spooky or dystopian twist. And this one has those elements as well and more because it's set on a film set where the protagonist is starring in a horror show as the final girl and it suddenly becomes all too real. She might have to actually try to survive and become the final girl for real. And I can't talk about that book without also talking about There's No Way I'd Die First by Lisa Springer. She's a debut author, so we're all really excited to see what else she comes up with because not only is this a spine-chilling horror story featuring a murderous clown, but also it's funny. Another author to watch is Jameson Shea, author of I Feed Her to the Beast and the Beast is Me. Unlike some other books on this list, this one isn't scary exactly, but it definitely has horror themes and vibes because it's about a black ballerina who has lots of ambitions, but is repeatedly passed up for her white peers. And she decides to make a deal with a literal demon. And it involves a mysterious fountain of blood underneath the city, a poisonous kiss, and a lot of bad decisions in the best kind of way. Also, the protagonist is bisexual. Speaking of bisexual protagonists, I also love The Taking of Jake Livingston by Ryan Douglas, which reads like a cross between Ace of Spades and The Sixth Sense because it's a dark academia story about a bisexual boy who can see ghosts. And it's not a problem. It's totally not a problem until it is. Of course, we know in a dark academia book, rumors are flying, but we also have a lot of rumors and spooky urban myths in We Don't Swim Here by Vincent Tirado. This book is all about the small town horror of town secrets and the lengths that people will go to to hide them and the ghosts that refuse to be buried. And the protagonist is about to discover that a lot of the urban legends in the small town she just moved to aren't just legends. I have to admit, I didn't love this one quite as much as I loved their first book, Burn Down, Rise Up, but it's because it's just so hard to compare any book to this one. It's got Stranger Things vibes, body horror, creepy insects, mold, and characters that you will absolutely love to learn more about. And of course, both of Vincent Tirado's books feature a queer cast. So speaking of ghosts, the next book on this list, again, is not especially scary, but definitely has a mystery and some spooky paranormal themes because I'm Not Supposed to Be in the Dark by Riss M. Nielsen is about a girl who's convinced that her best friend turned enemy is possessed by a ghost. Nielsen's writing blends 90s Whimsigoth vibes like The Craft or Practical Magic with folk traditions 
and brings a lot of her own mixed race heritage to the table in some ways that are really, really enjoyable. Last but not least, we're finishing up this list with one more haunted house book that's actually two stories in one. Delicious Monsters by LaSalle Sanberry follows two parallel stories of a girl who can see the dead but finds more than just ghosts in a haunted house, and decades later, a different teenage girl who tries to investigate what really happened to the first girl in the haunted house and has some tough choices to make about which story she wants to bring to light. If you wanna check out any of these books for yourself, you can find them on the shelf at the Free Library of Philadelphia or using apps like Libby, and you can always ask your librarians for help. Definitely get in touch with us if you're looking for more book recommendations or if you just wanna say hi. You can always find us on Instagram, you can email us, and of course you can visit us in person at Field Teen Center. We're located on the ground floor of Parkway Central Library at 1901 Vine Street. And for our most up-to-date hours and news about special events and programs, check our website. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you find something spooky to read.